quite a bit. See, instead of, and there's still, there's still rust there. You know, all of that is going to come back. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that you can't use filler on a car because you can. But you need to do it right, proper thicknesses. And I can smell it. I've been doing this long enough, I can smell it. That's cheap mm -hmm. stuff. Sorry. No, there's, there's, there's rust there. Yeah, there's still rust there. You just bond it over. You see this? I mean, look at this. The, the bondo is just, the bondo isn't even in here here. Right. Here, let me blow some dust. Watch yourselves. No, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Before you even do that. Okay, look, yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Here. Peeling it off by hand. Look at this. Unbelievable. Yep. And people pay good money to have these cars done. The plastic isn't even stuck to the car. It was too cold. There was dampness on it. There was something. The mix was wrong. So any number of things could have caused that. But you, you just simply can't have that. It, it just... People love these shoddy workmanship videos. Yeah, there's, I know, I know. So we were here a couple of days ago, and we shot the uh, over the front end stuff on that 37 Chevy, 37 Chevy with a 38 grill. Yes, I know. Okay. Yeah, I saw the scoldings on there. <laughs> right. Yeah. So as we're leaving, he says, "But you're going to see this Mustang we got." Oh God, I want to see more of this stuff. But you know, like a, like a moth to the flame, I, I had to yeah. come <laughs> to see this Mustang, yeah. and and you know what? It didn't disappoint. So I have to do a disclaimer. Before you do anything else. Yeah. Okay? Alright. Some of the nicest, hardest working, most talented people I've ever known are body and paint. Right? You're one of them. I try. Okay, yeah? yeah. yeah. So that said, right? I'm not down on body and paint guys. I got all, utmost respect for a good one. But there's a lot of bad ones. There's a lot of bad ones. And the cliche is body work hell. Or body work prison. Yeah. And you see this all the time where people will take a car. A restoration or, or you know a, a custom whatever it happens to be you know drop it off over at the body shop and then it just disappears into the hole and it's a yeah. bottomless pit that the owner just keeps throwing money at yep. right this one was at the shop for 18 months a year and, and a half a year and a half and this is as far as it got and they they would call and say i want to come see the car oh not today we're painting we're doing this we're doing that they they continually put them off when they went and confronted him at his shop, he does not let anybody in the shop. Okay. Okay. So I mean, you can come to my shop if you want to. And, and it's like I said, the reason why we do these videos is, is to identify this and show that we don't do this. Because now these, these people that have invested all this money in this car are doing it again. You know, and... and now, how much money did they have invested? I, 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 not really sure, but I would estimate probably twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars at this point. What are the chances of getting any satisfaction from the guy? That took Never him? happened. Um, Tennessee Department of Revenue shut him down because he wasn't paying his taxes. Okay, so yeah. even if the Tennessee Department of Revenue didn't shut him down, right? What are the chances of recouping? Well, according to local legend, um, what he does is uh, get, takes a deposit, gets a contract. An open-ended contract, no finish date, no potential finish date. Okay. Um, your car disappears into the shop. You can't see it. I need more money. You get more money. Well, when you don't bring him any money, he files paperwork, a mechanics lien on your car, disappears for the time that it takes for all that paperwork to go through. Then he owns your car. All right. Now we're talking about one shyster. Yes. Here. Yep. One shyster. Yep. But how common is this? To that level. Probably not all that common, but shoddy workmanship, bad bodywork, bad paint, bad, just bad everything, bad everything is insanely common. All right. This is this is uh, the kind of bodywork that a guy that may or may not speak English goes to the auction and buys a wrecked Honda Accord and welds the front of another one onto it. That's the kind of bodywork this is. It's just it's hacky. When I was towing 
when you, you know the side of the car is going by you as it's going up, you're like, oh my god, <laughs> right, right. you know, sanded scratches. And, That's what all my body work looks that way. But it's a different world. This is what what we do is different, right? right. You know. All right. So it's a smorgasbord of like, what the hell were they thinking? <laughs> so let's. Get, I want to start with just something mechanical. Go something ahead. jumped out at me yeah. right away. They uh, they they converted the car to power brakes, right? And you see, they use two different, two different nuts, holding the uh, the master arm. But this is like a completed thing. This car was ready to drive. <laughs> they don't fit. They don't thread down. They cross threaded in place. And then look, a, a, a Mustang Ford's is supposed to be painted black under the hood, like GM cars. Chrysler's are painted body color under the hood. Well, he painted body color under the hood, over white. So. Look at this area right here behind the master cylinder. They didn't even, he painted the car with the booster in place. I mean, how do you send something like this out into the world, right? It didn't even bother to, to mask off the booster and, and, and at least try to get the color behind it. No, just here, shh, done. All right, so cosmetically though, we've got, I mean, we're, we're not even talking about the, the fenders or the hood or anything like that. We're talking about just the cosmetics of what's going on Correct. here. Correct. The, the parts are their own story. They're their own story? Yeah. As I mean, bad as the rest of this? It's equal. I mean, okay. he didn't do better on some of it, that's for sure. All right, look at this patch over here. Now this is hidden under the battery tray. It is. But the point is, it's, it's just shoddy workmanship. Yes. It's like, what would it have taken to actually just, just finish this area. Plus here, look, the paint is just laying on top. Yeah. All right, so this is gonna this is gonna start rusting. I can pick it away with my, yeah. with my thumbnail. And the thing about it, a hardware kit for the front of this, like for CJ's Pony Parts, about 20, 20 bucks, bucks. Yeah. you know? And you just take them out. And I mean, there's there's rust, there's no prep work, zero prep, no prep work, work was done here. here. This, this was a patch that he welded and you could feel the rust from underneath. Yes. And here's an example of what you were talking about. The with yes. Foot. If this is where your fender ends up lining up, you're going to see that. Right. Which is really the least of the issues. Oh, very, 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 very minor. But the thing about it is, is these were at one time brand new clips. And the one time was right before he painted it. So he put them in there. As you can see, that's a brand new clip. He, he put them in there and then, and then painted, painted the it. car. And it's a combination of new clips and old clips. Here's one yeah. full rusted and yeah. pitted. Yep. I mean, and just paint it over it. I've got 10,000 of these. You know, use them routinely. Okay, let's 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 go to some of these other. Oh, this is beautiful fitting. He pointed this out. Yeah. He couldn't have he couldn't have taped over the splines. Right. He and just that, painted the splines. Not only that, but if you look over here, where you know how people go to take wipers off and they pry on them with a screwdriver right. or whatever. The damage is still there. He just painted over it. And then you, you pointed out that there's, there's DA, DA marks, marks on this. over the trim, yep. over the chrome trim. And if you pick it up, I don't know if you can, if it's going to transfer well to video, it's all white under there. So... But the point is, you go and you put brand new trim on a car, then you paint it? Yeah, no, and that's not how it works. You do the body work. There's yeah. actually brand new chrome trim, stainless, yep. what is this, chrome or stainless? stainless? Brand new stainless, and it's got DA marks all in it. Yep. I'll be able to sand it and buff it, but as on the point. Yeah, I know, exactly, it's that's not the point. Then, no. you, okay, so you got these other fine little details, like you just left the harnesses in place and painted over them. Uh, it didn't even clean this out. No. This is just, it's just filthy, right? And then this. Okay, so we were just playing around with this, so you don't really get a chance to see. Um, bef before we cut this out, there's a seam right here where the, where the quarter panel folds over this panel, and the seam just disappears here into Bondo. And then you, you can actually, the Bondo didn't ad adhere. You can actually pluck it out with your thumbnail. So all of this was going to blister and, and, and separate. Oh yeah, it was just a matter of time. The only reason it hasn't is because the car's been inside for 18 months. Okay. As soon as it goes outside and collects moisture, that's, that's popping. And 
point to the fact there that there's still rust there. There's rust. There's rust. There's rust. They just bondoed right over it. You know, the thing is, you get, okay, so you look the car over, it looks okay, you give yeah. them a check. A year later, this is bubbling Boom. out and yep. no recourse. None. Zero. So, okay, so all of this is, uh, so we got some, some plastic in there. It's, you know, it's to be expected. It's going to have a little bit. But then look at this. So this is the area that the, uh, the cap bolts over, right? And he didn't bother finishing any of this. Look at this crevice right here. This is exactly the type of thing that fills with moisture and it'll start eating away and bubble out. This is this is a goner. Yeah. In like no time at no all. No time at all. All this car has to do is get a couple of cycles of wet and dry. And and that's in Tennessee humidity, forget about it. It's <laughs> it's done. Exactly. Just sloppy shoddy workmanship. Yeah. Look at this weld over here. Just, just a couple of random tack welds, and, they, and they, nothing's finished, nothing's... But again, see, he doesn't care because all of that gets hidden under the bumper, it gets hidden under the valve. Exactly correct, and, and there's a lot of guys out there that know this. They know that there's, you know, the price you give them on a car, okay, I'm cutting this corner, I'm cutting that corner, I'm cutting this corner, because you're not going to see it. Mm -hmm. Somebody's eventually going to see it, and it's, a, it's, it's going to cause a problem. It's not an if, it's a when. Yeah. It's going to cause a problem. This is this is a, a rust bubble we waiting to happen. Oh, it's a rust Wait bubble waiting to happen. happen. Then here, look. So we're looking at the trunk, right? And I, I smell gas. And you know, in these cars, the the gas tank is 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 actually the trunk floor. There's a heavy smell of gas here. So either there's a rust hole or or, or a drill hole or something in this tank. But then look at this bolt right here. He just jammed it in. It doesn't belong here, right? He just jammed it in. It's not even tightened down. It just why? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And under here, now, Dynamat. Most car restorers or car guys or whatever know what Dynamat's for. Mm -hmm. um, you don't just take a random sheet and throw it in there. It, it it it's all connected. Everything's covered. Otherwise, it defeats the purpose. Well, the reason why he did it and it is because he did zero prep. Yeah zero prep on the trunk just spray bombed it or undercoating or whatever and goes I gotta hide that yep. so dynamite unbelievable yeah unbelievable yeah. trunk hinges this is crazy that's just un unacceptable by anybody's standards I mean it's just terrible it's 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 heavy pitted rust that he didn't even dress it down he just shot over it yep no this is unbelievable. This, this guy literally, he belongs in prison. Yeah. This is this is just pure thievery. This yeah. isn't this it, isn't it incompetence is. or, or, or shoddy workmanship. This is literally this just is taking somebody for a ride. Some of this is deliberate. Um, That's unbelievable. Look at how much here yeah, we, we dug into this real quick. You've, you've, you've got over a quarter inch of bondo right here. And these lines aren't even either. The uh this is it's just it's just doled out. There's no there's no I, I spotted this pretty much right away when I when I saw the car and we were using a magnet on this. The magnet sticks pretty well to the car everywhere. Here it just fell on the ground. It wouldn't stick. So I knew that this this was mud in here. But the, the thing about it is this cove is all it's all good. It's it sticks, but this radius here is wrong. Right. He did a good job at making it wrong. It looks good until you realize it's not it, 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 and, and you know i can't tell if that's if that's a different color filler underneath or if that's actually rust that's a different color filler okay yeah right. yeah but it's it's you can tell by the color of the filler it's a gray color it's it, and i know the smell because i've been doing it forever mm -hmm. it's inexpensive material the, the cheapest you can buy this shiny part here, you can see. It's a dent. Yeah. That's that's a that's an out and out dent. Yep. And then all the way down here, if you can catch some glare from the door, those those are low spots. It's un unbelievable. Well, a shoddy patch job over yep. here, and and like nothing is finished. They, and here, just random welds. 
and it, it's like I said, a lot of this stuff does not get seen. Right. But you need to know what you're paying for when, when you go to get a car. What a lot of people are paying for is that. Is for people doing that, they pay good money, and this is what's hidden under the beautiful shiny blue paint of your car. Um, all of which will come back. There's no, rust never sleeps. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay, let's, let's just give him the benefit of the doubt. He wasn't finished with the car when the tax man came and chained his building up, okay? So he wasn't asked to do any suspension work. Okay, great. Protect what's there. Yeah. You know, there's blue overspray, light blue overspray, all over everything. And white. And, and then, white. And then here, where he painted the white, there's rust coming through. Right. Well, all up in here, it's already started to rust. Mm -hmm. It's a ticking time bomb. There's no doubt about it. And you know, honestly, in my mind, this is typical. You go to these consignment dealer places. Oh, yeah. This is typical of what you find there. Yeah, you know? because somebody, it's a blue V8 Mustang convertible that sounds great. Right. Cult car, uh, you know, oh my God, I gotta have it. You Okay, your 401k or your kid's college money because they're not going, I'm gonna buy a car. And you go and buy this car and six months to a year later, let's say you're out getting right. a water pump or something like that on the car and the guy points something out to you. Then you start looking a little closer and start finding all this out. The, the, the time, is, is past where you can do anything about that. The, the, the target market that these people go for are, are the retirees. Yeah, the, right? they are. They own this car. They're retirees. They, they live in a uh, over 55 village over in Lebanon. Yeah. Came from Vegas. I mean, it, their eyesight isn't that well. They're not really car savvy. Right. They're buying, you know, they, 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 this is like they dream car when they, were, when they were teenagers and now they get a chance to own the thing and they're just not sharp. Right. You know, and that's, those are the, that's the customer that keeps these people in business. Correct. You know? it, it, and the consignment true. lots are the same way. Yes. The, the consignment lots are all loaded with stuff like that Chevy you've got over I used, there and this. I used to go do inspections for a couple of consignment, big consignment places we have here in the local area and not impressed. I mean, not impressed. I'd go and do an inspection. I'm honest with the guy from New Jersey that called me, please go look at this Camaro. And I go over there and look at it. I'm like, you're going to want to find another Camaro. Not this one. I met one of the one of the biggest names in that in the consignment dealer. Yes. Okay, one of the biggest names. And it was after hours. I was talking to one of their guys, right? And as I'm walking through the showroom, there's a, a 50 57 Chevy, and it's got it's got all the period like 60 stuff. It's it's got you know what I mean? It's, it's got the right wheels. It's got the right. Yeah. And the car caught my eye. It was like you know that's a pretty cool car. You know. And I'm looking the car over. And I notice as I'm as I'm stepping back from it that I see like something like like a, like a piece of paper hanging underneath. Yeah. So I reach underneath the car. Here, come here. I reach underneath the car like this. So yeah. Okay. So so piece of paper like hanging here. I reach underneath the car. I pull it down. It's duct tape. Okay. And it ran the whole length of the rocker. It was painted. It was painted with undercoating. It ran the whole length of the rocker. And when I reached in there, I was actually pulling dirt out. Lipstick on a pig. Lipstick on a pig. The body and the paint was primo, perfect, beautiful. Yeah. The wheels were immaculate. The interior was like, just like this. The interior is just beautiful. But once you, and, and you know, it's an epidemic. Yeah, it is. It, it's a lot of money to do one of these cars, to do any restoration on a car. And the, the, the problem is, is that people see the fact that, hey, I can make a lot of money doing this, mm -hmm. and I can really do it halfway and pull it off. And this is, this is a perfect example because he was in business for quite some time. I've been here in Tennessee for about 11 years and I knew of his shop 10 years ago. So he's done it quite a while. There are numerous stores, I'm not gonna name them, but he knows who he is. So. It's a shame. And you know, the things that you found on this car are just the surface. That's it. Because you haven't actually gotten into yeah. disassembling. And that's when God only knows what you're gonna find under the seats. When Fred and Becky came down here and told me about the car, I could tell that they were a little upset with with how things had gone so far with their car. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try and be as gentle as I can, you know, but we still got to get paid. Um, but he said, 
we're probably just going to have to completely redo it again, aren't we? And I said, yeah. They said, but we're, you know, we're going to go a little more in depth. Motors coming out, everything coming out. You know, it's because now, you know, you put a shiny paint job on it, and you got the blue overspray springs British, and these British aluminum headers. They yep. have overspray all over them. Yep. Unbelievable. Just shoddy from one end to the other. Yeah, and it's it's deliberate. It, it, this is a deliberate thing. I can see people making mistakes doing body work. I Everybody do it myself. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody you know, makes but mistakes. I go back and fix it. And and I honed my skills over the years to just not make that mistake again. I know you can't paint a car with an engine in it. You know. See, I work to the to the end of my skill level. Right. Which is terrible. Yeah. I mean, it's amateur at best. But I don't do it for people. Right. You know what I mean? I do it for myself. You do it for yourself. And it's like, I know what the flaws are. I know what I have to, I'm have i going to have to redo it because I do, you know what I mean? Yes. But when, when you represent yourself as somebody who knows what they're doing and you take their cash, this is, this is permanent. It's this illegal. Is just, yeah. Just I mean, it's just, and, and I, you know, there, I have to sleep at night. Okay. So, so what I do, and again, one of the reasons for these videos is to show people not only what they got, but what I'm going to do to fix it, right. you know, and, and you can see every aspect of what I'm doing versus calling the shop and them telling you, no, you can't come down here, you can't see your car right now. Really? So if people can follow the progress on this on Bennett's Hot Rod Garage and Classic Restoration. On, on YouTube. YouTube. Yes. Right? Yes. Give them a like and a sub and ring the bell and all the other yeah, stuff. All this stuff. And you're going to start doing a bunch of like uh, quickly how to's, right? Yes. Yeah, in fact, you, when you came in, I was doing that heater box for the 74 Roadrunner. Okay. We're going to film taking that apart and what it takes to rebuild one of those and make it work nice. So, you know, think, things like that. So. Okay. All right, Joe. Let me know if you find anything else. Oh, I will. Every place I look is just shiny. Uh, well, that's, see, we were looking at it this morning and it was it just snowballed. How's this? this? How's this? Look at this. What the hell were they doing here? How's that? Yeah. Maybe he was going for a fancy blue and white two-tone. Racing stripes on the frame rail. Seriously, you can't make this up. No, you can't. You can't. And granted, I mean, you know, I'll even give a criminal the benefit of the doubt. He may or may not have been done with this car when they came and got it. You know what I mean? So he, he may have... But well, he the, was the, parts, the parts that are painted and cleared, you know he's done there. He was certainly done with all of this mud right here, and he was certainly done with his dentist. I'm out of here. All right. See you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Thanks.